So why user engagement? Well, there's a lot of reasons for this. You know, an outside in, in approach is going to increase the likelihood of your product success. So this is going to increase the likelihood of de delivering on your business case. Your society or your, your, your for-profit publisher is going to be much happier. You want to mi minimize your ROI. And you want to solve your members and users' uh, needs and workflows. Uh, but at the end of the day, if they can't use your site, uh, it was all for naught. So we, we like to test in an iterative, agile fashion. We want to discover and validate, which is how we, we built this site. We want to understand our users, and we want to lead to a product um, that fits their needs and sells itself. So how many um, pragmatic marketing um, product management alumni do we have in the room? Not too many, but you're going to recognize um, Nihito, which is nothing of interest happens in the office. Uh, meaning get out and understand your users. You're not going to understand them by sitting at your desk. They also have another line, which I like a lot, which is your opinion, while interesting, is irrelevant. Now, you're, you, can't, you can't say that to your member leaders. And actually, in cardiology, um, we have many member leaders who are authorities on everything. <laughs> on my job, on product development, you name it. So um, to, to validate what our members need, and to go through a systematic product build is going to diffuse any of those, um, those opinions you may hear from your, from your members. So this is, this is important. You'll, you'll learn more from a realized user getting out of the office than you will sitting at your desk. And you know, leverage and embrace user feedback, the good and the bad. Your assumptions are going to be defunct in many cases, and you're going to learn things uh, you didn't know about your customers. So, Facts, not opinion, is the, is the groundwork of product management. Um, market facts, validate and define your product specifications and, and define your roadmap. And this is a continuous life cycle. It doesn't end at, um, at launch. It's a continuous process of measuring, analyze, design, engage, monitor, and start all over again. So this is our user engagement, engagement framework um, when we built the site. Um, certainly, we want to understand the pain points of our users, uh, their, their day in the life, uh, their workflows. What do they need from us? How do they discover our content? How do they consume our content? Um, it's also a win-loss analysis. Um, again, these platforms don't come cheap. You want to pick the features and functionality that deliver the most for your users. Um, you also want to serve up your distinctive competencies, um, unique content offerings. For example, we have podcasts, which are consumed. Um, it, it's amazing. We've had more than 3 million downloads in two years of uh, Jack podcasts. Um, multimedia content is something our users very much wanted, and we weren't supporting previously. So deliver what's unique in your portfolio um, to, uh, to delight your users. You also want to look at your competitive landscape. Uh, obviously, what other, what other journals are they looking at? Um, what, is, what is valuable in those other <coughs> offerings? Really benchmark against your competitors. And look at the technology assessment. What are the critical systems you need? What are the UX requirements? So we employ a variety of strategies, um, virtual roundtables. This is really um, WebEx um, sessions where you can collect users from across geographic regions and have a, a virtual discussion. They've been very effective, particularly in early um, discovery phase uh, to get some benchmarking. Also, you know, traditional focus group settings and one-on-one uh, -on -one observational studies, which are very valuable, um, particularly in prototype phase where you're watching and observing users uh, using the site and, and also in post-launch. We did quite a bit of this recently at our annual meeting. So this is pretty valuable qualitative research. And then we balance that with, 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 uh, with the quantitative stuff. Surveys, author surveys, reader surveys, uh, persona-specific surveys. We do a couple of these rounds a year to support the qualitative studies. And then we use secondary research, in particular market segments, international markets, uh, and also direct user feedback. So it's a mixture of quantitative, qualitative, and it's, uh, it's an ongoing process. Thank <laughs> you.